It's Saturday, October 30th, 2021. I wanted to make this video today because I wanted to share a few of these articles with you. I wanted to get your input. Please feel free to comment down below. But there is so much going on right here in the United States, so much that you need to be aware of, so much that you need to be protecting yourselves from. And we are continuing to watch this economy collapse. And you really need to be cautious and careful with what is going on and what is coming. But I want to start with this first article coming from The Hedge today. Former New Jersey Wells Fargo advisor arrested for stealing nearly $3 million from clients. Before I get into this article, my bank, a small bank in the area here that I've been dealing with, was closed for two days this week for no reason. Now, they allowed you to use the drive through but you could only withdraw $500 through the drive through okay? That's it. But the physical building, the structure itself, doors locked, no one allowed to enter. You go through the drive through you can withdraw up to $500. They were saying that's for security reasons, that they didn't want anybody withdrawing more than $500 through the drive through Very, very odd. Uh, bank has now reopened. I have no idea why it was shut down. And if I get a reason or an answer, it may not even be the truth. I don't know. But very odd that a bank would be closed for two days and not allowing you to withdraw more than $500. What do you think? Comment down below. Uh, I, know I still get people writing to me daily that their bank was closed for a day or two days. ATM's not working. But with everything that's going on, it's just very, very odd. And this is another reason why I don't keep all my money in the bank and neither should you. Uh, just think, if we had a cyber attack, if we had this this... Um, massive collapse take place and the doors locked, what would you do? How would you get to your money? How would you pay your bills? How would you buy food? Um, there's just a lot of what ifs going on and this is why I believe you should be your own central bank. But back to this article, advisor Kenneth Welsh was arrested Thursday morning at his home in River Edge, New Jersey. He went after elderly and financially unsophisticated people at his bank. And when you think about it, most people are not very sophisticated when it comes to finances. They continue to trust people like this, criminals like this at their banks. This, this is so dangerous to me that people leave all their money in banks, that they leave their, their assets and valuables in safety deposit box, and they entrust people uh, like Kenneth Welsh to look out for them, to protect them, and banks uh, like Wells Fargo to protect them and their money. He transferred $2.59 million from client accounts to credit cards of his family members. And he's accused of drawing checks on customers' accounts. More than a dozen checks were made out to a New Jersey coin dealer for gold coins. So we've learned a few things here from this article. Don't trust the banks. Don't keep all your money in the banks. And bankers apparently like gold coins. So very, very interesting. Again, another reason not to leave all your money in the bank. Here's another article. Largest U.S. homeowner raises rents as housing crunch persists. So there are so many things we have to be aware of. These criminal organizations we call banks and now the massive housing crunch that continues to persist. Institutional money has created a monopoly now uh, in the housing market. Blackstone, BlackRock, Vanguard, pension funds, you name it, are all competing against you to buy a home. According to Bloomberg, Invitation Homes Inc., which owns approximately 80,000 homes across the U.S., increased rents by 11% in just the third quarter. This is what happens when we allow institutional money to flood into the housing market by the way, they borrow money extremely cheap. Uh, and they can come in and offer $50,000 uh, above your, your bid in cash, close it in 7 to 10 days, and blow you out. So this is what you're competing against, and this is creating a massive bubble. Lawrence Yoon, the National so Association of Realtors chief economist, believes that surging rents could lead to more home buyers to avoid rising inflation because, of course, if you can't afford to rent, you can afford a million-dollar starter home. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? So this guy is completely oblivious. 
but again, this just reinforces my idea that we're going to see a massive housing bubble burst. Uh, we're going to see a housing crash here in the U.S. Uh, all this institutional money uh, inflating this bubble. Uh, you have people like uh, Lawrence Yoon who believe home buyers are going to avoid rising inflation by buying a house in the biggest housing bubble of all time. While the average uh, home now in America is nearly $400,000, while people are not working, people are getting wage cuts, and inflation is eating them up alive, and we're paying five dollars a gallon for a, a, a gallon, five dollars for a gallon of gas here in California. Uh, this guy is living in fantasy land. Mortgage rates rise to an eight-month high, tank, tanking refinance demand. Another reason that we're going to see housing crash is because interest rates are going to go up. The average interest rate for a thirty-year fixed mortgage rate right now. Uh, is 3.3%. Uh, that's up from the 3.23% 3. Uh, 3 that it was just recently. Mortgage applications to purchase a home were 9% lower than the same week a year ago. We are seeing things cooling down. Rates will go up. Prices will go down. What happens, ladies and gentlemen, when the demand is no longer there? Because when people don't have jobs, when they don't have a real income, uh, when they can't afford to, to put $150 of gas in their SUV, who's going to buy a house? How is this humanly possible? Uh, common sense no longer exists, I believe, because people just believe people will pay these astronomical rates to rent a home when they're not working. Uh, when they're getting wage cuts and when inflation is eating up everything they have, including uh, their their savings. So something is about to give here, ladies and gentlemen, and we are all going to witness these bubbles burst and we're going to witness the worst housing crash in human history. I truly, truly do believe that. Fed's favorite inflation indicator at 30 year high as savings rate plunges. Very bad combo when you have inflation at a 30 year high and savings rates plunging. Incomes in September fell significantly, dropping 1% month over month while spending rose 0.6%. Now, people will go, why did the spending rise? The spending rose because people are paying more for products and goods and they're getting less. People are going to pay more for the gasoline to put in their car. They're paying more for the food at the grocery store. They're paying more for rent. Everything is going up. Wages for private workers dropped from 10.8% to 1.7%, while wages for government workers rose to 7.2% from 6.8%. Private sector is getting destroyed. One significant note is the government transfer payments accounted for $3.9 trillion of personal income, leaving transfers income at $16.6 .6 trillion. That means 19%, get this, 19% of all income is transfer payments. Government giving people money. This is very concerning. Savings rate plunged from 9.2% to 7.5%. That's because the government money is drying up. This is looking less transitory by the week, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, it was only transitory. That was a lie. The economy is going to come roaring back. Another lie. Businesses are going to come roaring back. Another lie. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have been lied to a lot. 40% of the bull market is due solely to buybacks. What you see isn't always real, is it, ladies and gentlemen? And when we look at these markets, you talk about fantasy land. You talk about illusions and magic tricks. These markets are so fake. And we as a nation, we are going to see the repercussions and the devastation from all this trickery, criminality, and all these tricks and all these illusions, uh, this whole thing being propped up, somebody's going to pay the price. Unfortunately, it is going to be you and I. Corporate executives get compensated based on a higher stock price. Stock-based compensation. So they want those stocks to go up. And how do they do that? Well, they buy them back. The, co the corporation buys back its own stocks. A large percentage of, ex of executives have their compensation tied to company stock performance. 
So again, this is a, a, a mass manipulation. So a company may not even make a profit, but the stocks are going up because the, 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 the company, the corporation is buying its own stocks back. Corporate buybacks. The misuse and abuse of buybacks manipulate earnings and reward insiders. The stock market would look a lot different, ladies and gentlemen, if you erased this 40% of stock buybacks and you took out the Fed buying $120 billion a month of treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. Think about what it would really look like. Uh, and think about who's gonna get out first. The little guy, the average Joe on Robin Hood, uh, is not gonna get out before these people at the very top on the inside, okay? They are going to be obliterated. And as I, as I said before, this 1% who inflated this massive market bubble, the 1% who got all the money uh, at the top of the pyramid, the 1% who have all the insider knowledge, all the opportunity, the 1% the who borrow money for nothing, um, they're gonna laugh all the way to their private islands, they'll laugh on their yachts, their private jets, and, and their ranches in Montana, but the 99% are going to be crying because they are going to get wiped out. And they're gonna wanna blame these people, they're gonna to wanna to blame the markets, the financial institutions, these CEOs, the 1%. But ladies and gentlemen, at that time, uh, there's gonna be no time to be blaming anybody. You're gonna be in survival mode, okay? Y your life is going to be changing so quickly. And you can, you can play the blame game and point fingers, but you need to eat. You need to pay your bills. You, you need to make sure your house doesn't get repossessed. You need to make sure your car doesn't get repossessed. You need to make sure your kids are eating. You need to make sure the electricity's on. You, there's so much to worry about at this point. It doesn't matter at this point whose fault it's gonna be. And at the end of the day, if you're not preparing right now, if you're not preparing for this economic fallout, there's only one person to blame, and that's gonna be you. Waypoints on the road to currency destruction and how to avoid it. Uh, this is also on the hedge today. Realize this one thing today, ladies and gentlemen, it's not prices going up, it's your dollar going down. Your dollar is buying less and less every day. When the dollar crashes, then you're going to see the real price and purchasing power of gold, in my opinion. I truly, truly believe that. So why are most people buying cryptos? I'm doing the opposite. I'm buying gold, I'm buying silver, but uh, majority of what I'm buying is gold. I buy gold for protection. Now, most people buying cryptos, now they might say they're buying it because they're preparing for the dollar to collapse, but I think we all know why most, most people are buying cryptos, because they're gambling and they wanna make quick money. That's why people are gambling in cryptos. People will go, I don't wanna buy gold because I can't make money quick on gold, right? It's, it's a hedge against inflation, it's wealth protection, but people wanna make money right now. They wanna buy a crypto today and make a thousand or 5,000 by next week. That's why most people are buying cryptos, not because they're looking at it to protect their wealth. They're not looking at it because, oh, it's gonna protect you from a collapsing dollar. They're looking at it for today to make a quick buck. They're enticed by the promises of riches. People buy cryptos because everybody is buying cryptos. And just like the masses, just like the sheep, people do what other people do. Um, make money quick. Get rich quick. I see gold right now at an extreme undervaluation. The systematic suppression of gold in favor of the dollar as the world's re reserve currency is now going to come to an end. The fear that Westerners hardly own any bullion as part of their savings is gonna be a very, very big mistake. Not just a mistake, a costly mistake. Because I think that owning gold now is a necessity. Let me repeat this. The systematic suppression of gold in favor of the dollar as the world reserve currency is now going to come to an end. And if you're not holding real assets like gold or silver, it's going to be a costly mistake. I truly, truly believe that. How much gold is there in the world? Simple answer, not much. 
I bought uh, more gold this week. Uh, numerous people in my circle have bought gold. And what's very interesting is I went to the uh, SD Bullion website where I ordered. And by the way, people ask me, I've had three people ask me in the last day or two where I buy SD Bullion. I have a link down below. And I know that's going to trigger people because I have a link. But look, I don't care if you buy gold. I don't care if you don't buy gold. I don't care where you buy it from. I buy it from SD Bullion. A lot of people who watch this channel recommended SD Bullion to me. I've used them now for over two years. They've been fantastic. Uh, the prices have been very, very competitive. Service, phenomenal. So I recommend SD Bullion. You can go buy it at a coin shop. You can buy it at a pawn shop. You can go buy it from an array of different coin dealers online. Just make sure it's reputable. Uh, just in my opinion, you should own some. I don't care where you buy it from. It doesn't make any difference to me. I like SD Bullion, link down below. Scarcity is one of the characteristics that give gold value. Check this out. If you took all the gold in the world and you packed it into a cube, it would only measure 21.7 meters on each side and just 71 feet tall. Not a lot of gold in the entire world. It's very, very scarce. And as we know, the more scarce something is, it could be fine art, it could be a rare automobile, the less of it means the more value there is to it. Mining, mining companies are finding it harder to find gold. They're having to dig deeper and they're having a very difficult time finding locations of gold. And it's going to get harder as we're going to see institutional money come into the gold market. We're going to see when fear and panic hit these markets where people turn to you. It's going to be cryptos or it's going to be gold. And I firmly believe we're going to find out what's going to be more valuable during an economic collapse. And I truly believe that that's going to be gold. You know, there's a lot of people out there who've never even left their neighborhood. And they tell you and I that you shouldn't own gold. It's barbarous. Uh, they tell me I'm wrong. You're wrong. Um, but what this all tells me when I read articles like this tells me that they're wrong. Look, you can invest, gamble, whatever you want to call it, into cryptos, and that's fine. But I would only do that with money you, you have to lose, money that you can afford to lose. I can tell you this. Gold and silver in 5,000 years has never been worth zero. It will never be worth zero. And we've seen throughout history the worst times, the worst economic collapses, world wars, fiat currency collapses, dollar devaluations, Great Depressions, recessions, gold has always been king. Gold has always been money. I'm going to leave you with this on this beautiful day. It's a fantastic weekend. I, I hope that you're getting out, enjoying it, um, spending time with family, friends, looking at, at the beautiful nature God has given us. And I also hope that you're taking a little bit of time and adding to your preparations. And if you have the means, uh, maybe you got to cut out some lattes. Maybe you got to cut out going out to dinner. Maybe you got to cut out the weekend trips. But if you have the means, go get yourself a little bit of gold. Go get yourself a little bit of silver. You will sleep better at night and, and know this. It will never be worth zero. It goes up, it goes down, but it never goes to zero. And as times get worse, these are going to be the most important assets, physical assets, that you can hold. And they are the two most undervalued assets on planet Earth right now. There has never been a more important time to be an owner and holder of physical gold, physical silver, not paper, not mining stocks. Okay, that's gambling. Stay away from paper, gold, paper, silver. Stay away from the, the mining stocks. It's all paper, ladies and gentlemen. You need physical gold, physical silver, and you need to be holding it in safe locations that you can get to in a time of emergency. Because let me tell you, we're heading into some very, very serious times here. And if you want to sleep a little bit better at night, if you want to protect yourself a little bit better financially, and I don't give financial advice, I'm sharing with what I'm doing, my friends are doing, go get yourself a little gold and silver. God bless you all. Have a great weekend. Talk to all of you soon.